This is Jay Banerjee from Delhi. Today we are going to discuss one exciting topic and one of my favorite topic that is on the job training. Something which we learn on the job means some, where we are working. This is very interesting and very uh, effective mode of training we'll discuss. At the end of this session, you will be able to select and implement on the job training programs for employees in an organization. Uh, select and implement. The implementation portion is important. We'll discuss some of the points here. Please note them and I expect you to fulfill this objective, learning objective at the end uh, of the session. So far we have done, uh, you know, on these training methodologies. Uh, the training methodology is uh, connecting, you know, facilitating uh, between the trainer and the trainees. And this is important for transfer of knowledge, skills, etc. And there are various training uh, methods uh, for transfer of information. We use lecture for skills training. We use demonstration for case study. Uh, we use the study of events then and there. Then we use case study. Uh, for um, simulation exercise of, uh, simulated exercise of real situation, we use the uh, business games and technology-based e-learning. So far we have covered all this. Today, uh, um, uh, let us go and discuss the factory situations or workplace situations and see how the training can be imparted or what are the components of those uh, on-the-job training uh, in, an, uh, in a workplace. OJT, in short we call it OJT. And it is, uh, we'll see at the end, the difference between on, on the job training and off the job training. Let us concentrate on the on the job training. On the job training is just more experienced and skilled employees to train less skilled employees. Now, in any organization, there are senior persons, senior managers, experienced, uh, those who have been working there since long, they are not only employees or working, but they're also an asset. They are used for training the junior people in the company. So on the job training depends on how managers and senior professionals uh, take up the training very seriously and uh, engage the employees on the on the job training for furthering their skills and uh, knowledge. On the job uh, training takes many forms and can be supplemented with classroom training. This point is very important. Uh, just you know, in some cases we have seen on the job training means leave the employees and uh, tell him to do, um, uh, okay, you work in this section, that's all. No, it is almost like uh, roadside scooter uh, repairing wallers. Um, where a um, simple working boy, you know, goes there and learns how to repair a scooter. Uh, on the job training is much more than that. It is, uh, it can be supplemented with the classroom training, maybe lecture, maybe demonstration, maybe some uh, reading of the drawing or maps or some technical details. Then the on the job training happens, you know, in a better way and the trainees or the students or the employees, they, take more interest in this. So on the job training is not a standalone uh, system or the method. It has to be supplemented with some supporting uh, methods and some of them are lecture, demonstration, etc. Formal on the job training programs are typically conducted by employees. As I said that the superior technical knowledge, so all all companies, all organizations should have some senior professionals who are technically competent and who are eager to pass on their you know, knowledge and skills to the junior employees or the junior uh, trainees. So this is a main uh, clue in the success, uh, full running of the OJT programs in any company or in an organization where senior management uh, takes uh, the responsibility of uh, training the younger or the junior employees. Now, this uh, um, uh, can happen only if the senior professionals are 
trained, you know how to train. Now that is actually known as the train retainer programs most of the companies run. So it is better if they are not only competent, they are also, they are also, you know, asked to go through a TOT program that is train the trainer program. Uh, what it is on the job training method is flexible, flexible in the sense that you have a structured program, you see the progress, you see how the student has been, you know, accepting or how the student has been learning, how much learning takes place. And regularly, if you monitor it, then you can change also. That is not possible in the school, college education or in some training, other training programs. Here, we can be flexible and change a little bit here and there to suit the training needs of the uh, student or the employee. It is less expensive method because it is less expensive in the sense if he or she is an employee in the company, if he or she is coming from outside, and then of course it is a little bit costly because you are paying him or her for the job and uh, he or she is learning there. And uh, naturally after completion of the training, he or she will be more productive. So it is less expensive because you can see the result you can uh, make a structured training program and you can uh, impart the training program through some senior uh, management professionals. Uh, so it becomes, you don't need to pay them extra. So it is uh, less expensive. Uh, they use the machines, they use the facilities available in the company itself. So you don't have to create a, uh, separate facilities for this infrastructure for this. And therefore it is, less expensive. But if you send the candidate to another company uh, employee and there they learn, then of course it becomes uh, expensive. The trainee is highly motivated and encouraged to learn because the trainee becomes excited because he or she is learning new things. And uh, he thinks that this will enhance his skill. This will increase the, you know, this will increase the, um, acceptability, you know, he's uh, in the company and uh, enhancement or value addition to his career. So trainee, on the job training, trainees are always highly motivated and they know that after completion of training, something will happen to him or her. So he takes utmost interest in this learning. So the learning objectives are fulfilled if it is controlled and monitored. Uh, properly, minimum intervention. So once in the morning you say you do this and do that. And most of these uh, trainees I'll discuss in the subsequent slides, they are already having some basic knowledge and education. So they are responsible. So you don't need to every moment check what he or she uh, is doing uh, while doing the training program. Now various components are there. On the job training has various components or there are various ways to do it. One is the job rotation. Suppose uh, a candidate or the employee is working in one um, department of the company or the organization, then if he or she is sent to gain knowledge and experience from another department, then he or she learns that job. And uh, becomes more we you know valuable for the company. For example, I have seen in uh, store department or some um, supply department, people need to know about department to learn about the invoice, how to make the new forms of invoice and uh, what to add, what to minus, what to, um, uh, how to multiply the tax, etc., for the invoice for details of the bills and then maintain the registers accordingly. So what happens in this way, uh, the trainees, you know, uh, become acquainted with the system, which actually is a new system and companies uh, don't have any problem in uh, maintenance of the records as per the government requirements. <clears throat> this method helps the trainee understand the problems of other employees. See. Now, there is a proverb, you know, the wearer knows where the soup pinches. So many times I have seen uh, HR people criticize the marketing people, production people uh, criticize the maintenance people. Um, but once you go there, you know, uh, production people, 
maintenance people or marketing or HR or the admin or the commerce. Um, once you work in another department trying to understand their you know jobs and their day-to-day -day problems they face and the day-to-day -day situations they face, then you realize and what happens, the um, conflict management becomes easy in that company if they have this type of knowledge transfer from one department to another. Job rotation is very important thing in uh, team management, in conflict management, and of course, enhancing the knowledge and skill uh, of the company as a whole of each employee. So this method is very important in uh, multi in uh, getting the multi-skill employees or the multi-skill workers in an organization. Coaching. Uh, coaching is a specialized area where training is placed on the particular supervisor who functions as a coach. Uh, coaching is also on the job training because you are very much in the field, you are very much in the situation, very much in the organization where things are happening and the supervisor directs you or the training, the trainer directs the training what to do, what not to do, and then uh, the learning happens. So coaching is also on the job training and uh, coaching you can say mentoring also nowadays. Uh, so this is an important, especially in sports, in uh, some special area, these are important things in on the job training. Job instructions, step-by-step -step training in which the trainer explains the way of doing the jobs. Now, <clears throat> job instructions is something like uh, you divide the whole job into uh, some small task or the jobs and then for each task you write some instructions what to do and then leave it for the trainees to uh, learn by doing those instructions or by following those instructions and then in case of any mistakes uh, you um, correct the um, training that this is to be done this way so what happens if uh, the um, trainee they follow the instructions and then you have a monitoring system of correcting, then things improve and the uh, learning happens by um, working on these instructions. Committee assignments, you see committee, uh, there are various types of people in a committee. There, is all, there are always a various types of people uh, with various skills, various from different professions, different technical background. So committee, what they do, they discuss some issues, they discuss some problems, and they arrive at a solution, and they um, discuss among themselves. So if you send somebody there in that committee assignment, you assign some training, assign some employee to that committee, he gets the, he or she gets the opportunity to interact with the senior professionals or senior technical professionals and discuss maybe about the maintenance of the company or the machines, maybe the assembly line work, or maybe some admin or some uh, commerce related activities. So what happens, the senior people discuss and the committee uh, members discuss among themselves. Um, the trainee also takes part and learns what's going on. The totality of the situation he uh, learns so that way the learning happens. And if your objective is to help the trainee to acquire these skills or the knowledge, then this committee assignments is uh, very important. The only thing is that these committee assignments are given to uh, some middle level employees, not somebody who is very junior. <coughs> Internship training. Uh, usually these are very familiar with uh, many companies, many students. Uh, in this, uh, uh, in India or even outside also, that uh, students are placed in some uh, companies by the professional colleges and they undergo a training or they do a project or some assignments. So this is known as intensive training and this is nothing but uh, on the job training because the student is going to the company and then uh, working there and trying to learn some practical skills from uh, there, from the seniors. And the best thing is that they're trying to learn how the organization functions. This is the most important thing I have seen uh, students pick up from there. Besides the technical skills, which they are 
uh, anyway taught by some of the seniors. Apprenticeship training is the most important thing in this because this is very old uh, uh, and uh, in India it was uh, the Apprenticeship Act 1961 says everything about this apprenticeship where some uh, 14 year plus uh, boys and girls can take part in the training imparted by the organization. Uh, is, it is covered by the Apprenticeship Act 1961. It, uh, the training may be BTEC or diploma holder or ITI pass or any uh, school pass candidate. Only thing is that he should be interested and he should have some basic education to understand the job or the work. Now, um, uh, in apprenticeship training, uh, in apprenticeship training, the it, uh, the candidate is a trainee, he, he or she is not a worker. We will not discuss this in details because uh, this is beyond the scope of this uh, lecture or the syllabus of I study. This is on the labor law we studied uh, during the uh, management courses. Advantages. What are the advantages of uh, uh, OJT? Now, um, advantages uh, is the people learn best when they are actually engaged in action. Now, this is a, a thing that when I am doing something, you know, then I learn better. So, um, doing is everything. You see, whole life is like that. We do some activity. Whole life is maybe considered as on the job training. Uh, we are always engaged in doing some activity. Right now, I am teaching or training or uh, I am uh, on online uh, training activity. So, uh, we are learning, we are uh, doing some activity and learning. So, realistic situation when they are set in the factory, in the offices, in the organization, people become involved in that. So, involvement is there. Uh, not only in learning, but also doing the job. So this uh, learning and doing the job and uh, engaged in the action, these three make the training program very uh, effective and these are the advantage of the program. Uh, people always think, you know, that uh, they learn a lot of things, they want to do something now. Uh, all young graduates or young students, you know, including myself when I was there, uh, after passing the college, we all think, we always think that we have to do something. And uh, that something is uh, doing. Uh, so uh, this on-the-job training provides the best method. That's why I was talking about the Apprenticeship Act, which was passed in 1961. And uh, this uh, engagement of young people in the on-the-job training goes back to thousands of years. I think uh, people used to form guilds in Europe and even in India also different crafts and tradesmen and they used to go and work there and in some cases they used to pass some exams or some test and then become a tradesman. So this uh, you know when realistic setting you work with some guru or with some expert or with some uh, you know senior professional then you become part of the profession part of the trade and slowly you become a master by yourself. So this uh, engaged in action in realistic setting is a real training or the value addition to your life or to your career. Trainees help, uh, get help from their colleagues. Now in real situation, what happens? Uh, you have uh, people working around you and uh, you get help from them. If something you know you want to learn or something you have a problem, you can immediately ask them what to do. Even simply uh, a filling of the form. I remember when I worked in a factory, I used to, uh, long ago in a graduate factory, I used to ask them how to fill up the uh, simple form in time office. So these are, uh, you know, we learn from each other. We learn from senior colleagues. Uh, how this has to be done or that uh, we, I did, is it correct? So this, you know, confirmation and uh, revalidation or validation increases the interest in the job or interest in the learning and people become, you know, expert in that within a very short period of time. 
if the colleagues are helpful and if the trainees really don't feel shy to ask question. Uh, some people are, you know, very shy, they don't ask question. So then it is very difficult to learn. Asking question is one of the, in another lecture I had said, asking question is one of the most important tenets of the human civilization. You ask question, then only we can learn from others. Structured learning helps in first uh, skill development. Now, if the whole thing is structured, you know, step by step, then what happens then the skills become, suppose uh, operation, uh, lead machines, or CNC machines, or maintenance of a machine, or assembly line. Uh, I've seen in Nonita TV manufacturing assembly line, there are step by steps. People, you know, do, and one step is clear, then another step begins. So what happens, you know, step by step, if you have a structured training program, they have a routine, step by step, or, or a structure, or a logical steps, and they follow, and then uh, very fast the employees become, uh, you know, a skilled worker. So this uh, structured learning, if you, the on-the-job training, if you make it a structured way in different uh, steps and different uh, structures, small tasks, then what happens the people learn very fast and they see the value in learning day by day. Day-to-day -day problems are solved to the on the spot, thereby increasing the self-confidence. Now, if I have some question <coughs> and I don't have the solution of that question, then naturally I become frustrated. So my interest in uh, learning further gets decreased. I cannot you know, proceed further. And uh, this is a very you know, dangerous problem in the field of learning that I get stuck up in one situation, then I don't have the interest in the further learning. So, but in on the job training, what happens? The day-to-day -day problems are solved on the spot, thereby increasing the self-confidence. So once you have a problem, immediately ask the senior or your trainer or the colleagues, and uh, they will immediately help you, okay, this has to be done this way. So what happens that increases the self-confidence, you become happy, you become smart, uh, yeah, I can do this. So that can do this, you know, attitude, you know, helps you to learn further. And that's a good value addition to your career or to the trainees. And it's a good thing for the organization also uh, who employ this type of employees, you know, those who are interested in uh, learning few things uh, from each other. So that is the beauty of these things. If you, uh, if the colleagues are helpful. Only problem is that we'll see in subsequent slides but if uh, they, uh, similar type of trainees are not there, you know, then it becomes difficult because uh, any employee working in an organization, uh, they, you know, feel a little bit, you know, awkward to ask questions to the seniors or some, uh, even some uh, colleagues in working in the STEM factory, uh, they may say, oh, you have not learned this in your college. You don't know these simple things, what uh, degree you have got. So this, you know, we need to handle it properly. Some seniors should uh, uh, take care of all these simple things so that he or she doesn't get frustrated. And uh, therefore on the job training is much more than classroom situation where every day you have to follow it up. Every day problem has to be solved. And every day you have to see how much the candidate uh, making progress and uh, what are the problems faced by them so as a trainer, these are the simple things we have to keep in mind and see that the colleagues and the friends or the seniors, they are helpful in enhancing the learning of the uh, candidate or the uh, students. Uh, further advantages are greater focus on the individual training. You see the training is in focus. So, um, the whole thing actually is happening because of the trainee is getting trained in some area, in some uh, skill and in some process. So this, uh, the whole attention is on the trainee, how much he or she has been learning, uh, what are the problems faced by them and uh, what are his interests, etc. So individual trainee is at the focus. Some people maintain uh, records, some people uh, every day to day routine and some companies ask the students or the trainee to fill some forms every day and make a progress. Some people give them a diary 
to maintain some uh, companies have a big batch of on the job training candidates i have seen in ntpc uh, they if there is uh, some people from ntpc they will certify that edc centers are there and uh, they have some lectures also they are you know they discuss among themselves how much learning uh, what actually problems they faced and that's why uh, the learning get enhanced or increased uh, progress is uh, monitored so uh, once as i said that uh, how much you are learning if you uh, solve the problem day to day naturally the, there will be progress and if trainer monitors or the senior managers you know monitor this uh, whether the things are going according to the structure they uh, made uh, then it will be i think well accepted by the uh, students and it will be beneficial for the organization of course because organization is spending money on that and time and they are you know deploying the senior managers of the colleagues <clears throat> in the same department to monitor the pro progress of the training maybe modified according to the feedback now once the training you know begins it happens there may be some problems so what happens then the senior managers should sit down and they can modify the structure a little bit and then see you know uh, what better can be done for Uh, facilitating the learning process or helping the student according to his or her training needs so feedback is important in the sense that helps to know as a trainer we should be very careful in identifying the problem and uh, try to solve and if necessary modify the uh, structured program little bit to facilitate the learning process according to the needs of the individual students uh it is almost 10 29 30 uh may, let me finish these slides then we'll take up the question uh flexible according to learning ability of the trainees now trainees as i said the structured mod it can be modified little bit here and there so it is flexible uh where i will start and how i will do or maybe that uh, point i will take up first then another point so it is uh, flexibility is there in learning ability there is no direct uh, flow of events or direct flow of the lessons it is a <clears throat> whole structure i can follow one by one and uh, i can uh, do this according to the my learning ability so trainees are you know more comfortable in this and organization also know that at after some time the trainees will be completing this program and he or she will be uh trained employee then uh commitment and motivation of trainees are high because they are on the job they know that after they finish they will be uh, doing the same thing in the same organization if possible so naturally their commitment and motivation level of the trainees are high especially young generation uh when they join an organization they think of doing something so that motivation level of the trainees are very high and therefore we should give them the opportunity or good uh, to learn new things even a mid level manager learning new things in another department is also highly motivated because he or she knows this is uh, a value addition to his career so they take up some uh, question if there is any good morning sir good morning This is Arvind here. Uh, I have two questions. Yes, Arvind ji, how are you? I am good, thanks, sir. Uh, mm. uh, one question is related to coaching. That is OGT. You, you said that coaching is always uh, on the job training. Uh mm huh. -hmm. So, in case let's say if I am not in a job, but you know to develop some skills in order to get a job, if I am mm. going to get some coaching, will it be called OGT in that case? Yes, because you are doing something there. Okay. Uh, you see, OJT doesn't mean that you have to be an employee in the company. The whole uh, concept of Apprenticeship Act 1961 in India was uh, that apprentice is uh, the candidate is not an uh, not a worker, not an employee. It's clearly defined in the act. You, you please see the act. So that uh, your question that it is uh, employee uh, that is not necessary. That is not mandatory. He or she may be. He or she may not be. Okay. Uh, so the other question is you said that uh, on the job training if if like the training is you know conducted in an outside campus and outside trainers they are training they may not be ojt 
no no uh, uh, outside campus or outside organizations sometimes companies send to uh, you know some outside companies or some uh, organization outside and uh, that is also on the job training that actually they send for uh, enhancing his skill in that particular area which may not be uh, available in the company at that time you see uh, companies uh, business or the companies you no know, targets are manifold now they have a different uh, business goals or different targets now they are trying to start a new business or new install some new machinery in the company so naturally they will uh, think of uh, getting some of the uh, managers or some of the engineers or some of the juniors trained in that trade so that when they install or expand the factory in some another location then it is uh, very you know good to get them trained in another location which the facilities are not available in the company at the moment uh, in some i have seen in some companies when they uh, sell the machines to the um, company before installation they um, give some training but that training is also limited how to use and maintain that's all but if you want in organizational setup is better to send some of the trainees to some another outside the organization and get them trained so that they come back and fulfill the business objectives of the company it's a good question thank you yes sir, yes, sir. thank you sir uh, sir i have a couple of questions sir yes yeah, your good morning, name sir, sir. Uh, good morning sir i'm uh, anupam sir yes anupam ji good morning uh, sir uh, one is i would uh, request you to highlight the difference between the internship and the apprenticeship i am not really very clear for what uh -huh. between these two great Second, good observation. Good observation. Let me finish this answer first, Anupam ji. Uh, you see, uh, apprenticeship is uh, you know somebody uh, who is having uh, basic qualification and not necessarily in the trade. <clears throat> not necessarily in the trade, but it may be in the trade. And apprenticeship act is uh, generally not attached to any um, uh, institute. they come directly um, uh, and join the company under the apprenticeship act and uh, join as a trainee whereas in internship what happens some they are attached to some uh, institutes like management colleges engineering colleges and they come there and uh, you know do certain specific jobs as per their syllabus or as per the company's uh, rules and regulations and then they go back after again to the again to the back to the organization so uh, here uh, how much learning happens or not that becomes part of their total curriculum but an apprenticeship is learning to do the job uh, there itself um, and uh, similar jobs will be doing but not necessarily in case of internship uh, they may go join some another company and do something different i don't know then they will again go for the induction training then okay uh, sir so uh, the yeah. other other question was a little yes. more a little more basic one oh uh, yeah go ahead how to define the on job training as i understand the uh -huh. on job training primarily is uh, when you while you are performing a particular job in an organization uh -huh. it is to enhance your skill levels for performing uh -huh. a job job uh, at a higher level or maybe in a relative uh, related field uh, see, in the same uh, um, uh, that uh, higher level what should be um, you know removed from their rest of the thing what you said correctly you see i am going to do a job that is the basic thing now the learning will happen at the same place or the working uh, um, uh, working place or the organization or the factory these two points third point is somebody in the company itself will be my trainer or my senior manager or my colleagues i will learning so there is a learning environment in the company or they will train me to learn the job which job i am going to do absolutely sir so that is why i i uh, that was the uh, basic doubt that i had it has got to be within the company 
on enhancing your skill levels making you a better worker uh, like you gave an example of sending to a different department getting to know what the department uh, does those are all mm-hmm. because you, your basic job cannot be neglected you have the, the basic job oh your, yeah i'll come back to this point very good it remains yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It is your basic job plus something else. Something else, now, yes. yes. Huh. Now, in case you go outside, the, because you gave an example that uh-huh. you may be going outside the organization uh-huh. and learning something, then to my mind, that, that does not remain uh, on job training. It still remains a skill enhancement. You are enhancing, no, it is, it is, is uh, but it is uh, not an on job uh, training. Uh, sir, I uh, want to make a point here. That that is still on the job training because as per the business organization's needs in the future needs, I suppose I am the employer. I am sending my employees to another company. The situation is same. Only thing is that machines are different, but similar situation I am going to establish. I am going to expand my company maybe in Pune or maybe in Gajabad or in uh, Kanpur. So naturally that company has to spend money on uh, training his uh, employees. Uh, for that future role, so that is on the job training. It's very much on the job training. Because, it is because not... then who's then? How are you doing your existing jobs? Because uh, on job uh, training, uh, I understand uh, uh, in addition uh, uh, to your existing uh, uh, jobs. Existing jobs will be taken care of by the company. That is not our concern at the moment. Our concern is that whatever he has been sent for training, that is on the job training. Okay, because that is there also the, he is doing some job and learning because he has to come back. A trainee in the on-the-job training uh, learns the things, gets trained. Why? Because he has to do the job. Same thing is uh, true there. So that is on-the-job training, only outside the company. It's called outside placement or some say placement only. But uh, I call it in a very clear perspective that uh, business organization has many, you know, aims and objectives. I want to make another branch of the company in uh, Kanpur or maybe in some another city in India or maybe outside India. Then I need to train them. I have seen some people, you know, opening office in Japan. They send the candidates to learn Japanese language. Two three months, he just learns the languages, and then come back and go there. So these uh, that language learning is almost on the job training. Well, uh, let's sir, get back. Yeah. Hello. Sir, just a uh, very good morning. Just a little, Good morning, uh, ma'am. Uh, I'm Jyoti here. I just want a little yes, clarification, sir, uh-huh. when we were doing the differentiation between uh, apprenticeship and internship. Uh, yeah, you somebody that. asked me that question. Yes. yes, sir. Uh-huh. Sir, I just wanted a little uh-huh. clarification on this point. As you said, apprenticeship is learning to do the job there itself. And Apprentice is getting trained to do a job. Yes. And uh, he may be employed by the company, may not be employed by the company, because in Act of 1961, it is clearly mentioned the job is not guaranteed. Okay. And sir, in case of internship, they will go back to the institute. And uh, the point that you were elaborating was that they may do the job uh, of similar nature or may not do. Is that? Yeah, yeah. It may be, it may not be. Okay, this is what I just wanted That's to. That's why you know, you, you are if you are in HR, I know I have seen. Uh, we check the biota, and we see what type of projects they did in that company. So I ask them if they have been uh, suppose in IT companies. If they are in Java, I ask them, uh, do you know anything about the Python, or have you done any web development activity? So you see, when that becomes part of that uh, you know learning activity or on the job training, he or she has done in that uh, you know uh, you call it internship. Uh, but that is no doubt a training, that is no doubt a value addition, but not necessarily that he or she will be working there, may or may not be. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, so good morning, this is to this side, sir. Good morning, madam. Sir, uh, I just would like to add, if you allow, sir, probably the apprenticeship training, which they are, uh, everyone is talking about, sir, uh, IPI, the Industrial Training Institute, which have been designed in India, so particularly that uh, works on the framework of that only, so if I'm correct. Yeah, to some extent you are right, but ITI, I think, is, uh, you know, um, uh, enhancing the skill of school living candidates or school past. But nowadays, mm-hmm. ITI, ITI has become very structured. Uh, they allow only class 10 pass and 12 pass and mostly with science and maths. 
so yeah. not like when i was there you know any 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 person could go to iti but now now it is limited okay. uh, i was involved in skill development for 10 years i know i have visited various iti's in india from assam to punjab okay and uh, i have seen now nowadays it is more stru structured but you raised a good question madam after iti also they are sent sometimes for apprenticeship training in an organization okay uh, there are two things number one is not uh, all the machines are available in the um, iti which they are going to use so okay. again that solution also has been done i have seen in iti pusa if you are in delhi you will see mm -hmm. you go and visit it is clearly mentioned there some of the companies in uh, gurgaon have supplied the uh, machines to the iti mm -hmm. similar machines which uh, they use in their factories or they um, uh, their employees work and one of their supervisors or managers you know come periodically to tell something about the manufacturing process or about the machine etc mm -hmm. to the students so mm -hmm. it is a very good industry and uh, education institution collaboration uh, mm -hmm. which i think uh, has become very successful in germany after second world war okay. and to some extent in the other countries mm -hmm. and india if it does it's a, i think very good i think revolution in the in terms of jobs and skill development mm -hmm. thanks sir for great insight sir oh. the second question sir which was actually coming to my mind is we talked about spoke about job instructions and giving on job training with this uh, sir what we mentioned was that learn by doing uh, learning by doing is main way mm. that we go about mm. Mm. sir i find that in our day to day like we are inducting new people and then they are being assigned to us to help them on the mm. job Uh -huh. so uh, but learning by doing not always probably we are employing so do you suggest it is an idle way because uh, then mistakes and then the business uh, in the mind so is it that we have to proactively tell them everything and then do we have to madam i have uh, in the beginning uh, i think second or third slides yeah. I, i have said that it has to be mixed with the some lecture some session some okay. uh, you know uh, okay. mixed up with other you know methods yes. so okay. that actually becomes the complete uh, circle of this uh, learning or training okay. and it has been uh, proved to be very successful right sir okay uh, thank you sir okay, okay please uh, um, uh, let me proceed please if you allow uh, disadvantages so far we are discussing let us uh, uh, discuss the disadvantages of on the job training as the focus is on the job sometimes training aspects not taken seriously so uh, this uh, point is i have seen you know it is uh, hampered in the training system what happens people once they get a suppose i get a job i become too excited and try to show off that i am doing good job and uh, exactly that particular which uh, is assigned to me i try to excel on that particular things um, but there may be some other you know points in the job or other aspects of the total job holistic attitude i don't do i take uh, you know try to please my superior superior also thinks okay he is uh, already a uh, after one or two days uh, he starts thinking okay this um, boy has started uh, producing so he is almost like uh, a regular employee he is no more a trainee so organization thinks that is better so learning is hampered so there is a question the organization once the um, trainee becomes employee for that particular uh, you know specific job then the total learning takes a back seat and therefore the unpredictable now then after that nobody takes interest in that uh, okay he has completed now he is fit now he is um, only that tv suppose you know assembly line going on he is doing the job very soldering and tightening or fixing whatever you call it and then you use it as a regular employee and you become happy organization happy the trainee is also happy so in this happiness you know that total training aspect takes a back seat so this is the number one disadvantage so what should we do we should uh, try to uh, check how much learning is taking place not check how much job he is doing constant interaction with trainer and supervisors may make the trainees feel insecure some companies have every time go and poke them um, what uh, how you do this 
what you did that all you should not stand there you should stand there i have seen in many companies you know in the beginning of my life they used to say oh, don't go there don't touch that so these type of poking you know sometimes what happens the trainer you know the trainee you know become insecure uh, he think he or she thinks uh, i am trapped in a different situation i don't know how to get out of this well trained trainer supervisor is required for success of the program now any senior person any senior engineer or manager uh, they try to act as a trainer you ask anybody and he or she will start talking and talking and talking but uh, it doesn't mean that he is a good trainer so companies don't spend money on tot for the senior managers or supervisors any supervisor he thinks he knows the jobs so therefore he can train others but that is not the one sometimes it fails because of this the supervisors or the trainers are not well trained in the office now how to plan all these things now we have learned about these advantages and disadvantages what are the components of on the job training now as a trainer i should plan this so that the whole thing becomes successful so first thing is select the trainee with necessary background this is important thing as i said a basic education basic knowledge a basic interest is required for apprenticeship also for on the job training for internship or whatever it may be if he or she doesn't have the background to you know uh, understand the basic things of that machine or the organization then i think the plan is going to uh, fail select the department with training need now your company may have few departments now you select the candidate and then place him in that department for training not to a wrong department so this is again a trainer's responsibility to see uh, what actually is happening in the placement of the candidate or the training assign the supervisor with necessary skills so um, uh, once you place the candidate in a department also assign a particular supervisor who will control uh, his or uh, not i should not use the control who will monitor the training activities and progress of that um, training uh, so that progress is made develop the structured uh, contents and progress now this is a very important thing the content should be is a very simple um, but it should be well structured and uh, tuned to the um, needs of the candidate and needs of the organization now what what the company needs that i think as a trainer or hr manager we are very clear that i have to train this candidate in this area this skills these jobs or this marketing uh, skill etc so i know so therefore the content has to be developed if i cannot do it i'll take help of a specialized person and make it a structure step by step so that it becomes easier for me to follow as a trainer or the supervisor also it becomes easier for the student that he or she has to follow these steps uh, within this period and processes also what type of practicals or type of processes they will go through that should be clearly stated in the beginning itself develop the monitoring and feedback system now it is always uh, you know one uh, we always want this monitoring and feedback system to be incorporated in the whole uh, you know process means uh, you tell uh, the candidate that uh, every day you have to fill some forms how much progress you made get it signed by your supervisor and submit to hr or trainer and then uh, you take a feedback from the supervisor also maybe once in a week or after two days or three days and then you monitor the progress of the candidate so this is important thing monitoring and feedback system and this should be told to the candidate in the beginning itself okay we will be doing this thing to help you to facilitate the learning process and this is the policy of the company you have to tell the candidates in the beginning then your planning will not fail then your planning will be successful and how to make it uh, st successful a uh, structured program with clear learning outcome no when i say structured program i add one more thing that each structure or each step should have some learning outcome uh, how how to run a machine or how to operate a machine or how to produce some product 
uh, what I should do in an organization, how to go and face the customer, how to prepare some invoice or some marketing feedback forms. Uh, this um, learning outcome should be well spelled in the beginning and structured by structure that if you learn this much, then this will be the outcomes or this will be the benefits you will get and this will be the takeaway from your training program. So this uh, has to be you know, successfully told uh, to the candidate and each uh, structure program should have this learning outcome step by step. Realistic standard of performance, don't put any unrealistic. Um, you remember the smart goal we, uh, we learned in uh, goals and motivation, smart goals. So all goals has to be realistic. So here also the performance to be based on some realistic uh, standard. It's not something which the trainees or the, which the supervisors uh, can't understand or they feel awkward or uncomfortable in completing or doing. So uh, after discussions, the standard of performance should be set in a realistic uh, level. And sometimes it happens on realistic level, uh, if you fix, then the students will feel uh, uncomfortable. They may not be able to complete it. So that is a disaster in the on-the-job training. Money spent, time spent, nothing happened. Constant monitoring and feedback. You have to give time and efforts to see what they're doing, how much they are doing. And uh, because they will be an asset uh, to your company, to your organization, and in future, uh, maybe he will be a trainer also. So constant monitoring and feedback is important for success of this on the job training program. Allow networking and interactions of the trainees. Uh, this is important if you are in uh, say one department, uh, then let the trainee interact with others, you know, uh, um, other trainees in another department so that they learn from each other something about the organization, something about the uh, working of the company, something about the working of the machines or the production department, uh, like that. So uh, it is very important that uh, don't be strict, be flexible, and uh, allow them to network with others, interact with other trainees from various departments. This way we you know, create a learning environment which is important for the uh, company. And uh, this helps the uh, students also to, uh, you know, be comfortable in learning and they also become very uh, useful to the uh, company in future. Now, what is the strategy for the on-the-job training? Strategy for on-the-job training is use it for happier and loyal employees. You see, why I should have on-the-job training? Number one is uh, once the companies, you know, spend time and money for the development of the employees, for the skill development of the employees, then they become happy and they become loyal that their jobs are secured. You see, everybody thinks uh, that <coughs> what they will do after two years or three years, you know, nowadays young generations are much more. Not like us, you know, we got something and we become happy. But nowadays to make the employees happy is a uh, you know, very Herculean task for the HR and training managers. So this OJT is one of the important thing. Align OJT with the business needs. Now you discuss with the senior management professionals that what type of things they actually expect from the trainees in future. And therefore, uh, what are the business proposal or business expansion plan or maybe uh, some new business so uh, that way you can align them so that in future, in case of manpower needs or skill development, uh, skill required, skills are required or resources are required, then you can always um, send them for that, deploy them at the working site. Plan OJT for creation of highly skilled employees. Now this uh, OJT you know, will help you to uh, increase the skills of the employees for future use or maybe for uh, immediate use. OJT may be an attraction for new hiring. You see, once the uh, new recruits come to know this company has a good training system, they become interested in another way of attracting the um, candidate from the market. 
OJT may be helpful during changes in technology, business policies, and market changes. Now, on the job training, you know, keeps you updated, keeps you more, keeps the employees motivated. So, if there is sudden change in technology, especially in IT industry, electronics industries, then it becomes very easy to adapt to that. Uh, change in business policy also it happens, and uh, you, on the job training helps you to adapt to the same uh, in the market changes scenario also. OJT strategy, it is a continuous process. It is not one uh, or one month or two month or one year process, and then you forget it. It is a continuous process. So learning about how to respond to customers. See, some of the topics which uh, um, the company or a training manager or HR manager can think of. Number one is uh, learning about the, uh, <clears throat> learning about the how to respond to the customers. Using a new inventory system. This is important now. Uh, new tax laws come, new system, you know, improvement is there due to change in software, due to change in the process. And electronics industry, I have seen this inventory system is very important because the parts are kept according to codes. And if something is wrong, then whole thing is mishap. So that becomes a very tension I have seen. And uh, uh, sometimes production stop because of uh, inventory system is somewhere something has gone wrong. And so we need a continuous training on the job training. You should bring some trainees and employees from other departments to know the system so that in case of any emergency, you can run the system properly. Learning about the company expenses and financial report. This is important. Uh, some senior managers in uh, maintenance or in some <coughs> different uh, marketing, they don't bother what's happening there. So it is better to train them on the job training and make them aware of this financial dimension of the company. Changes in communication system. Many companies do this. Uh, their communication system change a group based or team based. So this uh, helps also to understand the communication system in a better way on the job training. New laws, maybe GST, maybe uh, post, uh, uh, as you said, the apprenticeship act on. There are many laws in uh, uh, India or outside also, and everybody should know uh, how to face uh, those laws so that companies are not blamed for any mishaps. Refresher courses, so for the senior managers or for uh, the engineers or for organization managers, you know, always it is better to update the knowledge. And so you should organize some on the job training programs for refreshment of the uh, knowledge or updating the knowledge and skill of the managers and supervisors. Uh, now this is uh, important. I have prepared a table for you and uh, on the job and off the job training. This is, uh, you will get the slides. Uh, I just want to mention uh, two things from here that uh, of the job training, the methods that adopted and development for the uh, far away from the field of the job where on the job training is uh, here only in the company itself and taught skills and knowledges. On the job method is a flexible method. As I said, uh, if uh, according to the feedback, we can change the structure a little bit and modify it. But in off the job training, like lectures and other things, you know, we cannot, uh, we have a fixed curriculum in the long term objectives, we cannot change it. Uh, on the job training, some methods are job rotation, apprenticeship, coaching, etc. And some methods in off the job training, lecture, case study, role play, management, uh, education, business games, etc. And on the job training, learning by doing the task. This is very important thing. And learning by acquiring knowledge is of the job training. So this is, a, I have prepared a slide, you know, competitive uh, table for you. And you may add few more on this if you want, I could have, but uh, you know, there is a limit to everything. Um, but you can, um, if you think you can add few more points in this and uh, for your learning or for your practice. Uh, <clears throat> So, um, should we take up some more question before we close? Hello, Alokji. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, should we take some questions for discussion? Yeah, sure, please, sir. Mm -hmm. But, uh, there in chat. Hello. Yeah. 
good morning sir this is jubi yeah good morning ma'am yeah sir i have a question related to uh, how to plan ogt so there was a point develop monitoring and feedback system uh -huh. so uh, when i was an intern i remember uh, i was given a feedback from from my institution uh -huh. that was supposed to be filled on every 15 days gap by the supervisor i was working under so uh, will that be included as a developing monitoring and feedback system see uh, <clears throat> somebody asked me about the internship and uh, the on the job training yes uh, see internship is a uh, little bit different in the sense that you go back to the institute institute uh, professor or trainer or lecturer controls it yes and uh, they coordinate with the company in um, in the real on the job training situation in a company what happens is uh, uh, is it day to day i have seen in some companies they have a format where uh, day to day what skills they did and how much they learned they have to fill the form in some companies if it is a long term apprenticeship program or long term on the job training program then it may be uh, every two days or three days Uh, okay. but there is some format you know some technical skill acquired or what difficulties they faced and they get, uh, as i said they yes. have to get it signed by the supervisor or his or her trainer and then that will come back to the hr manager so it is monitored and controlled within the organization now in uh, case of internship i have seen uh, companies uh, do not uh, you know take that much of interest they some assign some job to them they um, do the job and uh, some managers or something they you know sometimes they give them some hints or feedback but they are too busy you know to you know engage themselves in proper training that is being done by the uh, institute lecturer or professor so that is a basic difference between this you know uh, what's happening in the field uh, both are important in the sense that uh, to work in an organization itself is a positive thing in a trainee's life and because that helps him to know what actually organization is and how the functions what are the procedures the rules and regulations just uh, you know filling up the attendance form filling up the punching card you know this uh, is itself a very exciting for a young boy or girl and you know, i have seen so yes, this sir. is uh, i think you will also agree to that so students when they come for internship training they are really excited but the monitoring and feedback system uh, is a dual system here but in case of on the job training for the employees there is no such system it is a direct on the uh, job by the company and uh, it is uh, controlled by the company trained by the company thank you thank you sir yes any further question on the job training uh, summary so uh, using managers to train employees is an effective ogt strategy now <clears throat> here you see you are not spending money on the trainer you are not uh, bringing trainer from outside it is in house activity and uh, you select the managers uh, tell them what to do and uh, they know they are senior they are technically superior to the uh, employee training uh, trainees or the employees and it is a very effective way of learning because if you put the same supervisor or manager where the candidate is going to do the job he or she will not take a risk you know by not training the candidate so it is a, a very good strategy if you engage the same supervisor or same manager uh, to train the employee where he or she is going to work in after completion of the training you see if i am the manager i am not going to take a risk you know uh not training the candidate properly rather i will take a uh, chance you know that he or she is well trained so that i get the job done from him when uh, he completes the training so the best strategy for the trainer or the hr manager is uh, put the supervisor or managers of the same department as um, uh, his trainer learning takes place in authentic situation now if uh, see from the road side uh, scooter mechanic to um, your uh, um, factory um, mechanic or the worker uh, it is a authentic situation that boy in the road side scooter mechanic or cycle mechanic he is doing the real job 
and he is uh, opening the real scooter seeing the real scooter seeing the real parts there is nothing like uh, simulation and nothing like uh, drawing on the board it is a real situation and checking oh this is spark plug so when he first sees the spark plug he gets excited oh i need to know this is the this was the spark plug similarly in companies when they learn it you know that this way the machine learns this is the way to i should maintain the machine this is the way the product happens so what actually um, happens is the situation becomes authentic it's the real situation so naturally uh, learning happens by practice by doing and by of course by interest if you add with this on the on the job training little bit of lecture little bit of demonstration then uh, the motivation level becomes very high emphasis on the practical work of course uh, knowledge is there as i said select the employees carefully so that he or she has the basic knowledge basic education and interest in doing the work and therefore put them on the on the job training then it becomes um, uh, you know practical work in the real situation in authentic situation so the learning takes place according to the business objective of the company individual attention you monitor each employee day to day and um, structured program each structure each level what uh, uh, learning is going on you pay attention to individual employee and that way also the in individual employee becomes interested in learning or doing the job dealing with real situation appropriate to job requirements now this uh, real situations may be in marketing may be in finance may be in uh, technical or engineering uh, it is a real situation once you start you know then what happens this is actually the requirement of the job and uh, the steps we follow actually is the job itself so what happens a real situation helps me to learn the steps of the job and uh, in future i'll be able to do the appropriate job in a proper manner and there will be no failure of course some people say on the job training is a heat and trial method Mm, lots of error happens to happen but for that the supervisors and the trainers are there senior engineers are there senior managers are there who naturally uh, will uh, correct uh, and uh, train him minimize the mistakes so that is there mm, it's not purely hit and trial because he has the basic knowledge basic uh, understanding and uh, basic information about the job so naturally he will be focused on learning it and that's actually the basic objective of the on the job training on the job training is beneficial for both employers and employees employers in the sense i have put some points in the slides on that uh, employees become happy and loyal to work in the same organization in this uh, case uh, many interview hr managers we ask them uh, how will return the employees in the company ojt is one of the strategy if you um, uh, provide a good ojt system in the company uh, it is a very good retention policy part of the retention policy of an um, of a um, company and it is employees because if i am uh, if i get chance to learn a new skill or new you know methods naturally i'll be everybody is eager to learn as i said the, i consider the whole life is a pool of activity and it is actually so long we are alive we learn on the job and uh, when we are dead down the job is complete and it is time consuming so yes it is time consuming it is not one hour lecture on certain law certain theory certain concept what we do in lecture session it is not one two hours uh, you know thing it is a long process it's a well structured program you need to plan for it and you need to work hard for it so that's uh, actually about the um, uh, uh, on the job training any question uh, otherwise i'll close it uh, sir uh, my uh, simple uh, thought was going in the uh, in this regard like on the job training is so important and it's a long term process uh, but still sir i have seen most of the time there uh, lot of courses are coming only on the coaching and coaching like why only coaching because there are various components that can be required and used over a period of time so is there any certifications or things going on for a specialization in on the job training kind of a, a module 
see the um, thing is that the um, on the job training uh, coaching is also on the job training yeah. but uh, um, on the job training is a structured way of doing and it is a larger you see coaching is a subset of on the job training on yeah. the job training is a bigger set yeah. but it, it has many components one what you said that uh, people come to learn yeah uh, people come to learn and uh, people um, uh, they need help yeah because uh, and you, you have a structure of training now yeah. he or she has to fit in now mm. to fit in that again you should play the role in selection not anybody xyz comes mm. and you select him suppose for my hr company mm. hr department i'm not going to take anybody who doesn't have the knowledge or basic uh, mm. concept about the hr or training activity you should yeah. have some basic concept later on yeah. i can of course train him yeah. so that is a you know fundamental thing and uh, you should insist on that there will be emphasis on the practical work as i said Mm. Uh, practical situations you have to create in the company that mm. already exist because uh, existence of the company means it is working company mm. so that is there uh, except in some um, uh, very specialized areas otherwise yeah, yeah. it is the same thing for uh, for, uh, for suppose if uh, you know india wants to manufacture you know big uh, planes passenger planes or something naturally they have to send the mm -hmm. uh, employees to boeing or some other companies you know where they will go and get training and come back to india mm. so this is uh, you know that is also on the job training the only thing is that they have gone outside mm. like it is in your it is in it is in your hand to mm, uh, take and give uh, this uh, give a structured program yeah and, i think uh, this is really important because job instructions committee assignments these are all very interesting can be utilized mm -hmm. at every level very few, how... yes yes very few people use this uh, thanks for remembering yeah uh, committee assignments and uh, job instructions you know are very simple mm -hmm. and easy to follow for hr and training manager this is a good yeah. point thank you sir uh, anything else you see uh the books 18 to uh, 20 uh, you know page in devendra agachya it is about the uh, handbook you know uh, it is there in 18 to 20 uh, uh, on the job training it is uh, two three pages are mentioned otherwise the other book doesn't mention about anything about the on the job training uh, please uh, uh, see some other books if you have but this 18 to 20 some of the points i have discussed it is uh, given there you can have a look at it for apprenticeship back please uh, search from the net you will get lot of you know um, uh, feedback on that and you can learn lot of things and any feedback please uh, send your uh, you know queries uh, in the email given email id given uh, here and uh, alok ji hello Yes, sir. 